Account security isn't something you ever needed to take seriously with Steinberg software in the past. After all, if you had access to your dongles, you had access to your software. End of story. However, with the advent of Steinberg licensing, that has changed. It's possible that an attacker could gain access to your account, lock you out, and even take over your software and stop you being able to use it. And while this could probably be resolved by support in some time, it might be days or even weeks before you regained access. In this video, we're going to take a look at a few practical steps that you can take to ensure that this doesn't happen to you. So the first thing I want to talk about is passwords. So I see lots of people who use the same passwords across multiple sites, and that's a terrible idea. The reason is, if that gets compromised on another site, then every site you use it for can effectively get taken over. And remember, all of this stuff is done by scripts and bots. It's not done by people just sitting there typing your password into wherever. So please, please don't do that. To aid you with not having to do that, I would strongly suggest you use a password manager. I've been using one for about five years now, and I will never look back. I never forget a password mostly because I don't know any of my passwords. They're all auto-generated by my password manager, and all I know is the password that gets me into that account. I use Bitwarden, and you can take that as a recommendation, but obviously I'm not a computer security expert, but I keep abreast of these kind of things, and I think it's a good idea to do that. So let's take a look at it now. So on screen, you can see the Bitwarden site. So Bitwarden is the password manager that I use. I would recommend it. Uh, it's available for free. You can pay to get extra features, but you can get everything you want without any payment at all, which I think is good. So if we look at view plans and pricing and then go to personal, you can see we've got a free plan here, free forever, unlimited passwords, devices, all of the functions you need, basically everything you need to manage your passwords is free. I'd strongly recommend it. You can have it as a standalone app or log in on the web, but you can also have it as an extension in your browser. On the subject of browsers, uh, I don't use Chrome. I use Firefox. I have been for years. I'm much happier with it than I was with Chrome for a number of reasons, uh, partly because I believe in an open and free standards-based web, and that is definitely not what Chrome stands for, but that's the subject for a different video. Anyway, it integrates really well with Firefox, both on desktop and on mobile. Everything just works. Let's take a look at it in action. So the first situation, once you're up and running, you can just log into sites without ever having to worry about uh, even filling in passwords in 99% of sites cases. So here we are on the Steinberg site. I go to my Steinberg, which opens up in a new tab. And as you can see, the Bitwarden extension is saying that I've got nine plus uh, passwords and usernames for this site. Uh, shoot me. Yeah, I've had various different testing things and this, that and the other, but just going to use it to log in for one. So I just click here, pick the account at the top of the list because uh, that's one where I don't need to blur it out or anything like that. Uh, it fills it in and I can just log in. I have no idea what the password is. I never need to know. Everything's fine in that respect. So as far as managing your passwords once they're in, is it's, it's really straightforward. You can always look them up uh, as we will see in a bit. In terms of creating new passwords, etc. I'll just take you through that because I know quite a few people find uh, this part of password managers uh, pretty difficult to understand. So we're just going to have a look at that next. So let's look at the account and password creation process in Bitwarden. So here we are on pluginDiscounts.com. I know nothing about this site. It's just one of the first ones that came up. Um, this could be a scam. They could be nuclear terrorists for all I know. This is not an endorsement of them. I'm just going to use it as a music themed site to sign into. So this is one of those terrible sites where you click log in and then you have to register here. But there we go. So let's put in my email address. And then we're going to create a password. So we're going to click here, go to generator. It's created a new password, which we can just copy there. And then we can click in here and paste it in. 
we've got this is like the equivalent of a capture but there we go so we're going to register okay so this is a common thing is often bitwarden doesn't pick up a site having a login form because maybe the parts of the form were, were named differently etc so what i always do with this quickest way is i log out and then i log back in so i'm going to log back in again same details and paste the password in five plus one equals hopefully not too difficult for me i'm going to click login and this time you see bitwarden has said should it remember the password for you? So I'm just going to click save. And now that's saved. So you can see Bitwarden saying there's one account registered to this. So we never need to know what the password is. You don't need to write it down in your book of passwords that you can leave on the kitchen table and then wonder what happened when you get broken into in the middle of the night. All of that doesn't need to happen. So that's one of the great parts of this. So just creating new passwords. You don't need to think about it. They're always different. They're always unique. Everything's cool. Right. The next thing we're going to look at is a common thing, which is signing into an account downloader, et cetera. So signing into something like native access, that kind of thing. So let's take a look at how I approach that because I think it's a fairly easy and straightforward way to do it. So here's a fairly common situation with music software is you have a downloader or plugin manager, that kind of thing, and you need to sign into it. Now, obviously, you need to provide your email address and your password. That can be slightly painful, but it's not too bad with a, a manager. So normally you'll know your email address, but not necessarily. You might have different ones, but it's easy to find. So all you need to do is to go to your browser, go to the site in question. So in this case, I'm going to go to nativeinstruments.com and you can see it's got my account details there. And then I can just copy them. So if I click on the person, I can copy the username and I can flick back to that there, paste that in. And then if I click on the key, that's copy the password. I can paste that in, log in. All is well with the world. So that's how I manage those kind of things. It just means, again, I never need to know the password. I don't need to type them out. Occasionally you get something annoying, like I think drum Corps used to stop you. You couldn't paste the password in. You had to type it in by hand. But if you do, you can view them in the Bitwarden uh, account you can just click on it and you can you can open that up in fact let me just show you that so if you go to that here you click on the view and then you can click on the little eye to toggle the visibility and then you can see it and then you can just type it etc and it's really nicely done because they color numbers differently to letters so you can see clearly whether it's a zero or an o or a one or an l that kind of thing so it's all it's all been thought about it's almost as if these people actually know what they're doing So the next thing I want to look at is two-factor authentication. Now, this can take a variety of different forms from the laughable, such as my council, who email me two sets of numbers in the same email when I need to log in sometimes, meaningless, uh, through SMS, which is also not secure. So don't use SMS if you can avoid it, to one-time password generating apps. Now, this is the route which I would suggest to go to because it doesn't involve any extra cost. There are other ways you can generate these, but having one of these OTP apps on your phone will mean that you'll be able to set this up on all the accounts that you feel are really important and it will all just work straight out of the box. I can't give any personal recommendations on iOS because I don't use iOS devices but I'll link in the description to an article which gives you recommendations for them. As far as Android is concerned, the default seems to be Google Authenticator because it comes up first in search results, but I'm actually going to say use and OTP for the simple reason that it's possible to transfer the account to other devices seamlessly. So if you get a new phone, as I did only last week, you'll be able to transfer it over and all of your one-time passwords will still work. If you try doing this with Google Authenticator, typically it will break. I'm not sure if they fixed that, but certainly it was a problem in the past because it was tied to the device rather than to your account. With that over, let's take a look at how you can set this up on the Steinberg site because after all, that's why you're here. You want to make sure your Steinberg account is secure. 
Okay, so this is what I've linked to in the description. It claims to be the best two-factor authentication apps for iPhone, but you'll see Microsoft Authenticator. That should be pretty reliable. Uh, Google Authenticator, again, I don't know whether that has the issue that it does on Android where you can't transfer to a new device, but I don't have an iOS device, so I'm probably not the best person to ask. Uh, TOTP, etc. So you can see there are different options which are available. This is the one that I use. This is and OTP. It, it works absolutely fine for me. I've never had a problem with it. It can do backups, transfer to other devices, etc. It just works. It's really nice. And it's password protected as well. So I need to authenticate on my phone with my fingerprint before I can open it up. So it just works really nicely for me. Now let's take a look at using uh, an OTP two-factor on Steinberg's site. So here I am logged into my Steinberg account and I'm going to go to sign in and security. And you can see here, two-step authentication. So this is what we're interested in. This is the main crux of this video. So we need to click enable. Okay, I need to re-enter my current password, which of course I can do from Bitwarden because life is easy with a password manager. And then I need to take a picture of this particular code. So to enable this, I've got to scan that with my mobile device. This is just something you'll get used to. So this basically sets a unique key that is paired between the site and your authenticator. So this means that the codes are unique. Not everybody's typing in the same one. So at this point, what I planned to do was to show you a screen capture of and OTP and the process of adding the Steinberg site to it. But unfortunately, but quite sensibly, and OTP doesn't let you take screenshots and it doesn't let you record the screen. You just get black, which makes sense really from a security point of view, because it means that no other application can be stealing your code, which is actually, yeah, that's pretty sensible really, isn't it? Anyway, it's fairly straightforward. You press the plus button at the bottom and then it asks you what kind of uh, way you're going to enter the code and you put a QR code and then you just move your camera over this and instantly the code will be captured and then and OTP will start generating codes. And the first thing you do with it is you put a code back into the Steinberg site, which confirms that you've correctly entered that private key from the QR code. So on screen, you can see me doing that. Once you've done that, you then get a page with some backup codes, which you should make a note of and store them somewhere secure because if your phone gets lost or whatever, you've still got the ability to enter these. But obviously, you need to keep these secure as well because they will allow someone to access your account. So if you make those public, um, that's not a great idea. I've Since doing this, I've reset the authentication on this uh, account. So it's got a new private key. So the codes that you see on screen and the, the private key that you see there won't work. So obviously somebody could try hacking my account by doing that, but that won't work. And now most importantly, your two-factor authentication is enabled. So if I log out of my account and then I sign in, so I'm going to sign in again with that same account. It will ask me for the code. I get the code on the phone. And I logged in. And obviously, no one else is going to have access to your phone, so they're not going to be able to get that code. So that's nice and secure now. So there you go. That's how to secure your Steinberg account to hopefully stop anybody being able to take over all your lovely software that you've paid loads of money for. Now, as I said at the top of the video, this didn't matter a few years ago. When we're using dongles, who cares? You know, I, I didn't log into my Steinberg account for years on end. Why would I? There was no need to. Had the dongles, had all the codes on here, everything worked. There was no problem. But times have changed, and as such, you're now effectively tied to an online account and you want to make sure it's secure so you can continue to use your software. There'll probably be some people watching this thinking, oh, you know, this is scaremongering, et cetera. But if you look around, there are cases of people who've, whose accounts have been taken over and they've lost everything. You know, so typically people with like iCloud accounts, et cetera. And sometimes it's just mindless vandalism. There was one guy who was a journalist 
lost all of the photos of his kids, no backup, everything was deleted, gone, totally gone, never to come back. Um, I don't think that would necessarily be the case with your Steinberg account, but to be honest, I don't know. We're in early days of this. They're not going to trump it if they've had loads of people having their accounts taken over. Um, I certainly hope they haven't. I hope they've got good procedures in place. But even if they do, it would potentially be days, possibly weeks, before you got a response and you got back in. And you don't want that to happen. So take this a bit seriously. Say you need to take security a bit seriously these days because you just want to make sure you're not the the easiest person to attack. So if your account has got two-factor authentication on it, even if your passwords do get leaked via some other means, you're not going to have a problem with those important accounts getting compromised and you losing access to stuff, which you know we've all paid a lot of money for. I added up how much money I paid uh, to Steinberg over the years. It was a significant sum. I'm not going to tell anybody how much it is. Anyway, as ever, hope you found this video useful. And if you have, please do whatever it is that our autonomous robot overlords need to promote this channel beyond the world of uh, stupid thumbnails, etc. And hopefully we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.